माइंड यस परफेक्ट तो रेटल सर्जरी एंड इन कोविड एंड नाउ द पोस्ट कोविड एरा बिकॉज सम कंट्रीज एंड इवन सम पोर्शन ऑफ इंडिया आर रीचिंग द पोस्ट कोविड एरा बट वी आर गोइंग थ्रू द कोविड पीरियड एंड आई सपोज विद टाइम एज टाइम प्रोग्रेस इज मोर ऑफ हर्ड इम्यूनिटी दिल बी मोर ऑफ बेसिकली इंडियंस आर मोर हैविंग यू नो सम काइंड ऑफ इम्यूनिटी अगेंस्ट वेरी सिवियर रेस्पिरेटरी इन्फेक्शन बिकॉज दे ऑलरेडी हैव हैड various kinds of respiratory infections due to other viruses and there therefore there is a certain amount of immunity with the indians carry and they've also been given the bcg and also see considering all that anyway retinal surgery will continue there's no doubt about that is the first message and even despite covid you're not going to stop the surgery now the novel coronavirus disease for people who are probably uh, not into the basics of where it comes from and all that it's no one is sars cov2 it's a similar virus to the sars uh, virus which was there in the early 200 and uh, like 210 212 so, uh, small uh, this was a sars was a epidemic but it didn't reach pandemic proportions so the vaccine was being prepared for sars but then the, because the patients became all right and there were the cases disappeared suddenly they found that the sars the vaccine didn't come up but this new cov2 with virus which is this one coronavirus 2 is similar to sars so the it's easier to make the vaccine because many of them have started from the point where they had stopped making the sars vaccine so the, there are four or five companies in the us very fast moving ahead moderna and uh, the pfizer and all and some uh, maybe a uk based company with oxford india has about three different uh, Uh, platforms on which uh, you know this vaccine is being passed forwarded so the natural reservoir is bats natural reservoir is bats and civet cats so the problem in china is besides their other issues which they have is what they eat they eat they eat they have wildlife uh, you can say food halls or food marts where you go and pick up the cages and you pick up the animal you want and uh, many of these animals are lying stacked cages over cages so all the droppings of the animal of the top falls into the lower so it's a very unhygienic unbelievable condition which this chinese live in when they buy these animals and then they go and you know live or semi uh, live they eat these things and this is supposed to be a delicacy in most of the chinese restaurants the bats and bats the reservoir of thousands and millions of corona viruses and bats have some kind of an innate immunity within them they don't get infected they have some very strong immune system indians don't have the, sorry the world the world the human being doesn't have it so anyway it's main is a respiratory tract whether it's the mouth or the nose i lots of reports are there but it's very mild or you can say it's the proportion of infection through the eyes literally 0.01% if it's 100 on the other side so though they say the eye should be protected they it is emphasized by the who and the cd cdc that the nose and the mouth have to be totally protected they even go to the extent of saying masking is the best you can do even if the distancing sometimes is shorter but the mask should be properly put and uh, covering the nose and mouth and so that you should use a proper mask which without a wall when everything so we need to be very strict masking and uh, this is incubation period and indians younger indians are at high risk of uh, contracting the virus and they are the ones who will contribute the herd immunity uh, people who sit at home and do nothing and think that they won't get corona are actually going down in immunity if you come out and uh, spend some time in the hospital or way, like for uh, i would say for people who don't like to come out to the hospital they would actually get herd immunity because they get mild exposure and the mild exposure leads to herd immunity and they never get asymptomatic and they never end up with covid disease they will in fact just be asymptomatic so that's the reason why we insist that the residents and everybody should attend their duties but take proper ppe precautions wear the gown wear the gloves wear if you're seeing in the opd and wear the mask uh, either a mask or a goggles and wear the ma- uh, the mask and the goggles if not the goggles and the face shield so we, I, as i already told you there's a inherent uh, bcg vaccination as well as some genetic resistance ace inhibitors are thought to increase the the susceptibility to covid infection but 
we have some kind of variation to ace two, so we don't get this kind of uh, disease so severe. And high temperature and humidity in our country may play a role in because they say it stays in cold weather, in cold cuts, in cold uh, climate, and so probably in this high hot temperature of India, it may not uh, sustain so much. And it's very important to try it before retinal surgery because the unique challenges, different challenges. It's important to find out which case is the emergency case, it's a retinal detachment case, a, a fracture, a blowout fracture with ocular trauma and there's an open globe wound injury, such cases or other cases where the patient is losing vision acutely, such cases have to be kept as an emergency case. Urgent cases can also be taken up because they are also similar to the emergency cases. And they are cases where you have a diabetic traction detachment or, or you've got anti vegf injections to give the anti come in as emergency and urgent because they're blind. they would cause blindness if you don't give an anti vegf injection. So please don't delay the anti vegf injection, but all the same try the anti vegf injection. The ones who have more fluid, as we're going to discuss now, the ones who have more fluid, more drop receptors and uh, degeneration will occur. So even the DME patients who got frank DME with the new vascularization elsewhere required both the anti vegf and laser. So we, I personally found that a lot of patients of DR, NPDR went into severe uh, threatened like high-risk characteristics, PDR with high-risk characteristics. So in the last four months, they moved from a basically innocuous condition to a very serious condition. So this kind of a thing that because of lockdown, patients couldn't come was another big, big factor. I think the major factor of a patient going ill in the retinal picture was because of their delay in coming and because of the scare, scare they were scared out of uh, out of anything. I mean, they were not ready to step out of the house. Now they're starting to come out and they've lost eyes to NVG. So uh, daycare surgery should be performed. AIS guidelines should be followed. Uh, ex exhaustive AIS guidelines have been come out, have come out and you can refer to them. Refer to topical or uh, local and see the additional drapes over the patient's face should be put and have an O2 double pronged nasal catheter which can give the patient enough oxygen and not make him feel suffocated. Surgeon should put slash splash proof gloves, uh, gowns, which should not prevent it to get wet with their body. So, a minimum length of stay, only essential staff in the theater, our recording to be avoided. And N95 masks should be worn by the surgeon. And it's also important that the, also important that the patient wears a fresh mask with a tape on top of his nose and we also put a tape on top of your nose. Your own, they, he, we wear a 95, he can wear a three-ply mask. Double gloves is uh, well controversial, a single glove is also okay. And try to give a little gap between surgeries, you've got to clean the table and the surroundings, uh, put, put sodium hypochlorite and just mop it and then put spray some bacillol or bacillosid alcohol formation for, for formulations and in a staggered matter, matter, manner you should post the surgery. So this is a very important slide. What test do you get done for retinal, vitro-retinal surgery? The choice is three. The RT-PCR, the CBNAT, and the COVID antigen test, which is very quick. The CBNAT is also very quick. And the, this report is 30 minutes. This is three hours. And RT-PCR, usually we get it by evening if we send it before seven. But sometimes you can say at the maximum, maybe in some private labs, 24 hours. The RT-PCR is the most definitive test to detect, exclude or include a case of COVID. Initial two, three days, it may be negative because the patient has not yet contracted the disease to bring out the, uh, the report. But after third or fourth day, it does become positive. So for routine and elective surgery, this is the test of choice. And even like for surgeries like detachments or for giant tear or for diabetic vitrectomies or you're doing eclective macular hole or anything, you need to get an RT-PCR, I feel. And uh, CBNAT is for emergency surgery. It's very expensive. The report is available within three to four hours. Most of the labs don't carry this. The COVID antigen test is very uh, prevalent and it's for any surgery. It's low cost, but it's a low sensitivity with low cost, high false negatives. So you can get a COVID antigen test if you're in a private center and you've got patients coming into your clinic with retinal detachments, two of them. If you don't, if they send them out for RT-PCR, you're scared that they'll lose the patients to some other doctor. So the COVID, COVID antigen test is done and it's, uh, if it's negative, then you can go ahead and uh, negative, you'll have to get a PCR done. 
which positive definitely he has covid so it's only thing is he will require a pcr you can get a extra chest also done so there's a little bit of a confusion and what what exactly should be done but covid antigen test lot of people are operating with this some people are, i've seen i've heard i've talked to people in major centers in india in delhi they are doing basis of che- extra chest or not even extra chest if they have any symptoms of uh, breathlessness or fever or anything they said if they not go ahead go in for your surgery so in the various uh, attitudes which you are taking so all pre op cases should get rt pcr extra chest longer duration surgery we are surgery should get a or probability exposure ocular exposure to respiratory droplets irrigate with bss and then wash eyes if your own eyes get a uh, spray uh, ocular exposure there's no hematogenous spread in covid infection masks we prefer the n95 and these are the kind of disposable masks masks we made by professor velu pandian who is the ocular pharmacologist at aplace is also making uh, spray uh, these hand hand wash sprays he is also making the bag. freshly prepared he gives us one person sort of hypochlorite in jars every day in the morning so that we use that for mopping our floors so we get lots of things from him locally made so now this is a very important slide large setups should have a proper heating ventilation and air conditioning the hvac system this controls temperature humidity particulate count and pressure gradient between to, the air handling in the basically the heart of a air flow consists of the inflow and outflow ducts which we also have air conditioning compressor which you can well understand there is a air blower which moves this air and then there are micro filters it has to go through then pre hepa filters which are 3 and 5 micron filters with terminal hepa which is 0.3 so when the it the air comes cool cool air comes into the ot it's actually finally that it passes through the terminal hepa filter so anything till 0.3 uh, microns will be stopped and uh, the air will be cooled cleaned and brought in and this is the kind of air we need in the theater uv light is a very good option it can be switched on in the hu we have started since covid period we put a uv light in the hu unit where the where all this thing is things are kept and there we, we it's very effective so when the air moves in it also has to has the uv light on it and that helps to kill the organisms because uv light is very effective even say for metro and uh, for the china i believe even for buses and metros they switch on the uv light at night for manage of covid positive patients you don't need to have air going out vent out because the air is containing covid infection and so therefore you should have a negative pressure ventilation system and uh, this is about the same this is what we do after the surgery we add is put this is the patient mask we apply and we have a catheter running here we have a catheter running here the oxygen catheter and we put a, a clean sheet over each patient before after mopping with after mopping with the uh, sodium hypochlorite so this is the advantage of a ingenuity system i just want to tell you in covid era is that uh, you can you are quite a distance from the surgery and you are not looking into the microscope not close to the mic- microscope and the viewing system you are far away and the um, uh, you just have to look at the screen so this ingenuity actually is a black come as a blessing because you stay far away from the patient's face so i'll just talk to you about a few conditions which i've operated during the i just wanted because there will be a little bit of ophthalmology also so these are the compound sclerosis of the macula in pathological myops you can have inner wall sclerosis or inner layer sclerosis or the outer layer sclerosis just like a juvenile retinal sclerosis and they They actually form a compound retinal sclerosis. We've done some publishing in this, and you have an associated vitreometer traction, hyaloid pulling on it, taut, very taut hyaloid. There's a foveal sclerosis and a vitreous sclerosis. So the retina is split and the vitreous is also split. So that's why you want to take off the vitreous separately. So this is a patient, right eye. He came to us with 660. Left eye, sorry, it was only finger counting two meters. He had a hole in both eyes. Here the hole was associated with not much of detachment. but here the retina was all pulled up and lifted up so, so there was this was a big hole so we thought of because the choroid reflex was totally lost in this worst eye we thought of doing the left eye first and uh, it's just a short video clip of this left eye so i was a long so i took our calculus at as far as possible the each side the superior ones and sometimes i take out the cannula and just insert the instruments directly 
I tried with the longer instruments, but it doesn't help. Those instruments are not of much value. So I'm trying to pull off the Pusira Hallard, which is very taut. Using the, I don't use the uh, tanos or the finesse loop. I generally use the suction of the cut cutter, which is maybe twenty three, twenty five. And uh, once you get the suction of the cutter, you can peel off the hyaloid. And then you can just stain the posterior pole. Once you devoid of the hyaloid, you can stain the posterior pole with uh, brilliant blue, which is relatively non toxic. And then you got some dye under the submacular space, some retinal space. And then uh, we put some perfluorocarbon liquid. This is a very thin retina, so we like to do it under a, under a pH, uh, under perfluorocarbons. And uh, we make sure we get, we don't break the uh, eye into small bits. Otherwise, you won't be able to get those flaps which you want to cover the hole with. We take help of the IOCT, which guides us. The IOCT guides us where to. You can see the area has been filled up. This is a hole. Once it's filled up, then uh, this IOCT really is uh, in this kind of surgery. Way. And uh, I have also drained off. From a para central retinotomy, the drained of the subretinal BBG. So, this was a post operative picture. This was a pre op of this left eye, which we just saw. This is a post operative picture. And though the patient had a trauma, also the uh, retina didn't be, uh, rip off. You know. so I'll come to macular holes. It's recommended for stage two or more. Conservatively for stage one, it's critical step is to remove the peri 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 macular traction. The various methods inverted temporal flap, the so cabbage technique. So this was one hole which came to me it looked like a little atypical, and just to highlight that when you see a hole, we jump at it, but sometimes we need to jump, but also have a look at the rest of the retina. So we found a VPT. So there was a vascular tumor over there, and. Uh, it's very important to rule that out. So this is one case which I'm just showing you. Uh, this was a pre-op and this is a 24 hours post-op. This is a post-op through the swept source whole city. It gives us a, this is a pre-op. So what we've done is the cabbage technique or pink flaps from all sides, which I feel is the safest. Because what I want is good results. So I'm not, I want to experiment with techniques where, well, you can say you can do a temporal flap. I'm sure we can do it. I've done it also. But Stick of the posterior hyaloid and uh, you know basically detach the vitreous. The vitreous is detached after that. So we can put the flaps onto the put the jet. See the flaps on the macula. Uh. Make sure the flaps are on the hole. Is Sir's voice breaking or my network is poor? Mama, your voice is breaking? Sometimes your voice breaks. No, 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 it is coming. It is coming. Okay, okay, then my network is poor. Okay. This is a case of PDR I just operated last week. So we have macular TRD. See how the ultrasound also, the TRD was there. So there's vitreous hemorrhage, but TRD was definite over here. You see the high spike on the A scans, so the combined vector scanning, the post op result. First day with gas. So you see, even in diabetics, this uh, on block technique of G Gary Abraham sometimes works very well. So, what we got was fibrovascular proliferation with TRD all around the disc with subhyaloid blood, trapped blood under the uh, hyaloid. So, we gently remove the traction and uh, you don't have to go very fast. And uh, I initially started 23 and then go on to 27 gauge surgery. So I try to get the edge of the proliferation and very gradually pull it in the direction in which it would uh, get free. 
So that's very important to identify which direction to pull and make sure you don't create any breaks when you're pulling. Very gently you try to pull, and sometimes the whole sheet comes off. Or something like Gary Abrams had described in 1990. So this is the set 27 gauge which I lo- like to use uh, always in uh, adapting with Trekme. I and sometimes start early on with 27 gauge. So all those tractions which are very tightly uh, adherent. Those are the places where you can use the 27G at 10,000 cuts a minute and the chance of cut uh, break formation is low. And uh, 27G can really aspirate without causing any tissue damage. It can aspirate blood around the, ma- around the macula. So things are quite good with it. So I think 27G is uh, a, a MIBS uh, probe which is really good for diabetic vitrectomies, I feel. But RDs and all, you may not need 27G. The epidural membrane, I'll show you one picture, very good uh, video. This was recently, just three, four days back. This patient had heavy laser done to delimit his RD, RD which is a small RD in the inferior temple quadrant. But he came with a very huge membrane, a, a G2 membrane, a grade 2 membrane. So when we saw this, we had used the breaks within, which was within the fitted macula. So, so what we did was we caught hold of the edge of the I caught hold of the edge of the ERM. So important to find the edge. But if you don't find the edge, you might pull on the retina and cause more damage to the inner retina. If you just peel this off in the proper way, inside out, and uh, don't pinch the retina because pinch peel is my favorite. I don't like these uh, tannos or the other instruments supplied by Alcon. So the patient did very well and uh, his VR was in fact similar to what you get in a foil dip. Last of, but not the least, I want to tell you something which I've been doing for the last four or five years. I'm using recombinant TPA in the concentration of 12.5 micrograms in 0.1 ml. The Vastin 1.1 ml and air bubble, 0.1 cc or 0.2 cc, because you get a lot of submacular bleeds, and most of the submacular bleeds come from neovascular AMD or from more from PCBIs, polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy eyes. And strangely enough, whether there's no fluid, I have two patients now in the in COVID period, there are two patients who didn't have any fluid, but had a huge network of new vessels on OCTA bled before the one month was over. They were receiving their uh, aflipper sept and they bled before the one month was over. So I was taken aback that uh, even, so I thought that we have to give importance to large CNA and large membranes on the octa. So if the membrane is large, I don't know how, how large it has to be to say that, yes, we must inject. But previously, always the thought is, okay, OCTA membranes are there, but never inject before fluid is there in the OCT. But I've changed that now into whether large membranes, I'm going to inject despite no fluid, patient is dry. I'm not giving giving a month follow-up because two, three of my patients, two patients definite who come back with bleed before that month was over. So I don't like this submacular bleed coming up again in, in the patient. And I'd like to ask your experience, well, how do you manage it? So this was uh, actually not the submacular bleed due to, uh, this is one of our ex-director's wife, uh, Professor Botani's wife. So she came with a ram, uh, little artery macro, macro anism, And this was a uh, small, this a ram over here. And she bled in the pre-retinal space, she bled in the intra- intra-retinal space, she bled in the sub-retinal space, typical of RAM, pre-intra-retinal, sub-retinal. So she came like this and over three, four uh, days, she said her bleed increase, whatever, her curtain became total and she could not see anything. Initially, it was 636, 625. So she has a she had a prolonged hypertensive, uh, you know, period prior to coming to us. And this three, four days, her blood was spy, there was a spike in her, B, her BP and she suddenly went to more bleeding from the the ruptured ma- macroaneurysm. The ruptured macroaneurysm bled a little bit more and she totally dropped vision. So what we had to do was to do surgery and put in a recombinant TT- TPA. This is what I did just about uh, less than six days back. So blood was going all the way in the center. It was thinner blood in the center, it's, as you can see, but it was very well there. And her division was down to finger and She very incapacitated, very unhappy. So I said, uh, uh, Madam, Miss, uh, she's a leading gynecologist of Chinese in Delhi also, Dr. Manohar Bhutani. Ma'am, we need to operate. 
So all this is under the under the retina. All this is blood. You see, the whole blood has lifted it up. And uh, I said, ma'am, the central fovea is also involved, and there's no question we have to but to operate and hope for the best because antivirals will not help at this stage. So, so we gave the injection of recombinant TPA, twelve point five micrograms in point one ml, avastin, two point five milligrams in point one ml, and air, which you can see. And today I saw her; she's improved vision to already six twenty four. She was at three by six. She's come to six twenty four. She's doing well. She's very happy. So thank you very much. I hope I've not overshot my time, Professor Namrata. No, no, not at all, sir. It was a pleasure listening to the whole talk, and uh, you continue to inspire us with your hard work.